Yellow, we back to do Viva Thievers. All right. Uh, honorable mentions. Let's get them out the way right now. Let's talk about Braxton Miller for just, just for a quick second. Hold up. Time out. Give me 30. There we go. Braxton Miller didn't have a good time at the combine. He really didn't have a good senior bowl neither. Braxton Miller was this, uh, hey, he's a project. You hate to see him with the ball in his hands. He's he's dangerous. Yeah. He, he's a project. Yeah. Yeah. Would you risk a first round pick on him? Uh, Braxton Miller is like a fourth round project to me right now. And when I say honorable mention, I mean as honorable as I can get without trying to make fun of Braxton Miller. He still is a dynamic player. He still is a big body. He still is a, he still is a, a dynamic athlete. But as far as being a receiver, consistent hands, consistent routes, uh, you know, reading coverage, things like that. What do you risk? What do you risk to get Braxton Miller? Hey, what do you risk? My other uh, honor, honorable mentions, <clears throat> I'm going to do three of them because they all the same guy to me. Uh, Farrell Cooper, Sterling Shepard, and Rashad Higgins. Higgins. Farrell from uh, South Carolina, uh, Sterling from Oklahoma, and Higgins from uh, Colorado State. The reason I say they're the same guy, they're not the same guy, but they're all pretty athletic receivers. They're not number one option guys. They're two to three option guys. But when you watch them on tape, they're all about production. Like, they did everything for their respective offenses, you know? And um, when you when you, when you you actually go back and watch them, you can see uh, what they meant to the team. You know what I'm saying? Like, the team, each of these teams weren't that great. I wouldn't say Oklahoma wasn't, wasn't that great. But uh, I know South, South Carolina and Colorado State, they weren't really dynamic, dynamic offenses. Not like... Uh, not like a Alabama or a uh, Ohio State type offense, you know what I'm saying? Like it wasn't a super pro type of deal, but um, you'll see these guys catch passes. You'll see these guys run reverses, and you'll see these guys uh, return punts and kicks. You know what I'm saying? Those guys were very important to their programs. They're very productive characters, you know, and uh, that's why I got them bunched all together. Now they're not the same dude. Some guys have more traits than others, you know, but um, I just bunched them up just to give them a little shout out. Honorable mentions. Let's jump into it. My number one guy, Rich Homie Quan Treadwell, um, from Ole Miss. He didn't run the forty at the uh, at the combine. You know, we kind of wanted to see what he was going to run. We know he's not fast, but if he would have pulled out a four six, we we you know we would have been like, okay, you know, we knew he wasn't fast, but four six is cool. Maybe he was scared he was going to run a four eight because if he would have run a four eight, we would have made fun of Rich Homie Quan Treadwell. So. It's up to him to uh, to have a uh, to have a good pro day when everyone goes to Oxford, Mississippi to see him and Laramie and um, old Roberto Kim uh, Dichi. But <clears throat> think about Rich Homie Quan is people uh, try to knock him because he's not fast. You shouldn't knock him because he's not fast. It, it, it's just you know when you look at a receiver, think of it like this: you just have to use your tools to get open. Okay. Everybody has different. Everybody has different tools to get open. Some people hand fight to get open. Some people jump over people to get open. Some people physical their ways to get, they're, they're physical themselves into being open. Some people outrun people to get open. Some people run routes really well to get open. Rich homie Quan physicals his way to get open. He's very athletic. He can jump over you. He can uh, he can outman you. You know what I'm saying? You, you can you can be hip to hip covering him. Okay. But he has strong hands and he has good reach. He has good hand eye coordination. So you can be hip to hip covering Rich Homie Quan as long as he can get to the ball and you potentially can't. He doesn't really need a lot of separation to be able to catch on you. You know what I'm saying? So uh he's still the number one receiver to me. Now will he go uh 
No, will he be a, a number four to eighth prospect? Mm, I don't know. He may be a nine to twelve guy now, but he is the number one uh, wide receiver in my league in my um, in my rankings. Uh, let's talk about somebody that gained a little ground over the combine. Let's talk about Josh Doxson from TCU a little bit. Um, we we all knew his game. You know, we we know he we knew he was somewhat athletic. He likes to high point the ball, jump over people, great hands. His routes uh, can use a little bit of polishing, but it's something that he can't fix. But um, what we noticed was that after he ran his forty, after he did his field drills and whatnot, did his field drills. He ran his forty. He uh, he showed great hands, great concentration, things like that. Uh, he showed that he was pretty agile. Josh Doxson is an athlete. He's more of an athlete than we thought he was. And, you know, when you're a 6'2", 6'3", wide receiver that, that has a reputation of playing big, then when you come out and show that you can actually run a little bit, you gain a lot of fans. So, Josh Dox from Do- – John- I literally will say that five times fast. Josh Doxson from TCU definitely gained a lot of ground this uh, this week at the uh, Combine. So, shouts out to him. <clears throat> uh, my number three guy, Corey Coleman from Baylor. <clears throat> Size and route tree. Okay, you want to see him run more than five routes, and you want to see him put some weight on. Okay, everything else he got the juice. Okay, now as far as uh, his route running, coaching, somebody can fix that. As far as um, his size, he won't get any taller, but somebody can put him in the weight room. Somebody's gonna give him a ham sandwich. He gonna be all right. You know what I'm saying? Everything else, dynamic football player, speed, quickness, good hands. He knows how to make he he can make people miss. He can read coverage. He can he can find soft spots in zone. You know what I'm saying? Corey Coleman, dynamic playmaker. I think he can he can return a little bit too. I'm not 100. percent I'm not 100 percent sure on that, but uh, I do think that he can um, that he can return uh, <clears throat> he can return uh, kicks as well. Da, 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 da. Where am I? At? Where am I? At? We talking about wide receivers number four. <clears throat> I was talking about Corey Coleman. Yeah, uh, yeah, man. Like I said, man, Corey Coleman. He's uh, he's you know uh, some some guys knock him because of his uh, his uh, size or whatnot. But that's gonna that's gonna be a dynamic football player. He's gonna uh, kind of like what uh, what Tyler Lock is doing for um, for Seattle. You know, kind of like. Uh, he he he's 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 gonna be that small body, dynamic type uh type player, um, but uh, moving on number four, <clears throat> let's talk about Will Fuller from Notre Dame. Okay, uh, this dude, he had a lot of questions coming in. Will Will Fuller from Notre Dame, he had a lot of questions coming in about um about his hands. You know, was he was he gonna be uh was he was he gonna be able to catch the ball well? Um, we know he's a burner. We know he's fast. We know he's super quick. We know he can run routes pretty well. Uh, athletic, right? And some pretty decent size on him too. Um, but what we were worried about was his hands. You know, so when you uh so when it when it came down to the combine, to uh Will Fuller's combine it was like all right, cool. Let's see if um. Pardon me, y'all. I'm, I'm, bl- I'm trying to block this block this spam on my group. Yeah, so so you know, doing doing his his on field drills and his gauntlet drill, we saw that Will Fuller uh, worked on his hands um, during his um, during his off season or whatnot, and that's really what he had the biggest uh, the biggest knock on. He was a body catcher and all that. So shouts out to Will Fuller for um, actually putting in the work. So that's why he climbed up the rankings. He was like a number seven guy for me at some point, but he climbed all the way up to number four. So, shouts out to Will Fuller for that. Shouts out to Will Fuller for that. But number five, guys, Michael Thompson. When I think about uh, when I think about Michael Thompson, I think uh, he's a route runner, man. He uh, he runs uh, pretty good routes, pretty good size. He's a, a productive dude. Is he a super fast guy? I wouldn't say all that, but uh, he does create separation and he 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 gets the job done. He's a productive dude. Uh, he was a lot of people's number two uh, wide receiver. Things happen, you know what I'm saying? But um, Michael Thomas, when he gets to the league, he's going to be a very serviceable number two uh, wide receiver, and I, I, I do feel like he's going to be all right out here in these streets. Um, pretty decent hands, too, from Ohio State. Again, I keep forgetting to say, say where these guys are from. Michael Thomas from Ohio State, <clears throat> he's going to be cool. And my last guy is Tyler Boyd, another uh, 
decent sized slot receiver. You know, he's six one, a little decent size, a little decent one eighty nine on one ninety eight was what I meant to say, one hundred ninety eight pounds. But um, he 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 runs all of your reverses, all of your screens, your slants, your inside routes, all that type of stuff. He's um he's good at all that stuff. Um. He made a lot of plays, man. He could, he 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 also rushed the ball too. He he uh he made a lot of plays at Notre Dame. Very dynamic player. Uh, I like him. A lot of people like him. Some people say he was the number one guy. I don't know. This is the thing about this about this receiver class, man, is that when you look at one through six, any of these guys can be number one through six. It just depends on preference. And I just prefer for Tyler Tyler Boyd to be number six. Now, will things change between now and pro days and drafts? Sure, things are gonna change. Uh, I might have to update this video. Why not? I'll 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 do it. You know, I'll do a video with all my updates if I need to update anything. But um Yes, Tyler Boyd is my number six guy. That being said, there's gonna be a link on the screen somewhere around here for a wide receiver video. There should be another link on the screen somewhere around there for another wide receiver video. Y'all check those out if you haven't. Um <clears throat> And I'm Vash Lombardi. Join my Facebook group, Lombardi's Draft Talk, L-O-M-B-A-R-D-I apostrophe S Draft Talk on Facebook. And I'm Vash Lombardi on Twitter. When I get some more Twitter followers, I will tweet a lot more. Thank y'all for watching. Peace.